High drama in the East County as a brush fire gets dangerously close to some homes burning 100 acres. Tonight, it's 10% contained. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. And I'm Marcella Lee in tonight for Carlo Chiquetto. The fire broke out early this afternoon near the 17,000 block of Skyline Truck Trail in Lawson Valley. News 8's Brandon Lewis has been on the scene all day and has the very latest. Uh, Barbara Lee and Marcella, firefighters made quick work in knocking down the flames, but it is by no means out. Let's give you an idea of just how close this got to some folks' homes. You see the earth here completely scorched. We are standing in the defensible space of one man's home. And then we'll look at the hillside here. There is still smoke billowing up. Hand crews are down there working to put out hot spots. We spoke with the man who owns this home, who describes just how close the flames got. That's crazy. You can feel the heat. Tim Hillman could see the black smoke as he drove home on the 94. His son called him minutes earlier to tell him flames were on the horizon. He was a little bit panicked. He said, hey, there's a fire going on, and, you know, it's hard to determine that over a phone. When he arrived to his Skyline truck trail home, the fire was creeping closer. It burned all the way up, right up to the edge of the fence lines. Mild winds pushed the fire in unpredictable directions. Embers started fires here and there, and it just started burning everywhere, and it got kind of crazy. It quickly grew to more than 100 acres. Well, we've been here 30 years. We know the drill. You, if you're not ready, then look out. As firefighters battle to protect nearby structures. The smoke, the, the noise, the, the, the commotion, the movement, all the, all the pieces moving around. Pretty interesting. The biggest challenge is the terrain. Oh, it's incredibly dangerous. With few roads and many canyons, helicopters made the best attack. That aircraft allow, slows the fires uh, down and allows the folks on the ground to catch up to it. Without it, uh, the fires would run and, and we'd have a heck of a time trying to catch it. Within hours, they started to contain it with residents. Grateful it didn't do more damage. You just hope you're not in the line. Right. You know, it's a matter of a degree. One degree, you could, it could have been right here. It could be burning right all through here. Just, it didn't. So, we got lucky. Cal Fire says they expect hand crews will be out here for much of the night and will likely return tomorrow as they continue to make sure that this fire is completely contained and all those hot spots are out. Barbara Lee and Marcella. All right, Brandon, thank you. And crews have stopped the spread of a brush fire burning near the Sycamore landfill in East Miramar. Broke out around 2 o'clock this afternoon. Crews attacked the flames from both the air and the ground. Some also responded to some spot fires east of Interstate 15 near Pomerado Road. At last check, that fire had burned 15 acres and was 50% contained. The cause of that fire is not known. It was another very hot day all across the county, but relief may be on the way. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis knows that answer. She joins us now with a first look at your <laughs> microclimate forecast. Hi, Carlene. Hey, Marcella, that's right. As we go into our forecast, ladies, we're still talking about the warmth that was out there today, especially looking for inland valley areas. We had 90s, we had 80s. The only relief was towards the coast with those 70s. But that's not just the one factor. There's three factors that go into this. Dry conditions, relative humidity values being low, as well as winds picking up and the hot temperatures. Looking towards East County, you can see that there is still that smoke out there and reduced visibility in spots because of patchy smoke looks to be in the forecast going into at least 8 p.m. for tonight. So we've had onshore flow and that impacted our temperatures closer towards the coast. And that's going to continue to modify the warm, dry air mass that is over us as we hit tomorrow's forecast. And we're taking that into the weekend as well. So that will bring in those relative humidity values that will be higher. And so that will help with all of our dry conditions that we've had aiding in those brush fires that have been popping up all over the place. Let's go ahead and take a look at that complete forecast coming up. Back to you, Marcella. All right, Carlene, thanks. A house fire in El Cajon has led to a drug investigation. The fire destroyed the house in the 1600 block of Via Elisa. Two dogs died. The sheriff's department originally said there was no evidence of criminal cause. But today, narcotics investigators confirmed that an extraction lab was found on the site. The DEA is now investigating. Some gay pride leaders don't want law enforcement agencies to participate in the San Diego Gay Pride Parade and Festival until more reform is promised. News 8's Alicia Summers joins us now from Hillcrest with more. 
San Diego Pride just released the four steps they want to see taken before uniformed law enforcement is allowed back into Pride. That repeated violence and trauma that we have been witnessing over and over and over and over and over again on television, that is trauma and that's scary. As a result, Pride is not allowing law enforcement agencies to have contingents in the San Diego Pride Parade or booths in the Pride Festival unless law enforcement agencies support policy reform. That's step one. If there's a black police officer, you know, you maybe want to march with the Black Coalition or you maybe want to march with PFLAG or the Interfaith Coalition or maybe one of the synagogues or churches that comes and participates. So Some local faith leaders held a media conference this morning recommending reforms in law enforcement agencies as well to ensure fair and just treatment of all residents regardless of their skin color. And people like you and like me have to one day reckon with the reality of truth the truth that some of us in society operate under the idea of white supremacy. Step two, Pride is asking the city of San Diego to recognize the San Diego Pride Parade as a free speech event and no longer bill the organization for road closures and safety. As our event produces about $26.6 .6 million in revenue for the city, all we're asking is to not be billed that about $80,000 a year and that instead we can take that fund, those funds and invest them directly in LGBTQ black programming um, that I think will help to uplift our community. Step three, Pride is asking the city of San Diego to immediately adopt the eight can't wait campaign recommendations. is asking for a phased approach to policy reform recommendations centering black LGBTQ San Diegans. You can read the full pride proposal by visiting our website cbs8.com and clicking on the help button. Back to you. San Diego Police Department just released this following statement. It says the members of the San Diego Police Department are all part of the community including the LGBTQ community. We are disappointed with the decision made by San Diego Pride because further divide is not what we need at this critical time. We will focus on reviewing recommendations brought forth to continually strengthen community partnerships. A La Mesa business is now one step closer to reopening after looting and a fire on May 30th devastated his store. But volunteers have helped him clean, and today, one small business offered to replace all of the broken windows. News 8's Heather Hope has the story. La Mesa Glass installing new glass for Play It Again Sports all for free. The business getting a new lease on the life of its company after looting and fire caused much damage and had the business close. Broken glass from shattered windows being cleared to make way for repairs at Play It Again Sports on University Avenue in La Mesa. It's pretty much all hands on deck to, to get it done. The sporting goods store was badly looted following rioting in La Mesa on May 30th. A fire caused smoke damage and set the sprinklers running for hours, which devastated the building. The smoke was coming out the windows, and uh, it was just a mad, I mean, it was just a scene of people running around. Damage costing the store tens of thousands of dollars. We put everything into this store, and we just opened less than a year ago. So, I mean, it was, it was a pretty bad feeling um, thinking that all our life savings that we had put into it was just burning up right in front of us. Through all the stolen bikes, balls, and exercise equipment, the owner says surprisingly a teenage looter returned two brand new baseball bats and items his friend stole from nearby Sally's Beauty Supply. One looter brought stuff back. Um, he basically expressed some remorse and said that it wasn't, you know, his character and he knows better and brought stuff back and apologized. Dan Buxton says he forgave the looter, didn't report him to police, but authorities do have all his surveillance video to determine who started the fire. Now rising from rioting ashes. We have to repaint parts of the store. We have to clean all the walls. We have to repair damaged ceiling. Many repairs have to be done in order to reopen. La Mesa volunteers have stepped up. And it's been people helping for the past 10 days since then. In steps small business La Mesa Glass, installing new windows for free. Really nice that the owner of, the, of La Mesa Glass was willing to, you know, put forth the time and the effort to help this community. Dan Buxton says he's blown away by the support and hopes it continues for all in need. I hope that um, everyone feels included in this community and, 
And I know there's a lot of people who aren't feeling that way, and, and um, we need to do better as a whole for all of us. As for the glass repairs outside, the windows hope to be installed and finished by today, the front door sometime by tomorrow, and the business hopes to be up and running within the next two weeks. I'll send it back to you. The number of coronavirus cases in the county is nearing 9,000. Today, officials are reporting 161 new cases of COVID-19. That's out of nearly 5,000 tests performed. That's a 3.2% average, just above the 14-day rolling average of 3.1%. 16% of all cases have required hospitalization. The total number of cases now stands at 8,998. Also, three additional deaths were reported, bringing that total to 308. A new program is giving San Diego students more money for food during the pandemic. Local students who get free or reduced price meals are now eligible for $365 for groceries and grab and go meals while schools remain closed. We encourage everyone uh, to uh, go through the application process. Uh, that is $91 million uh, in grocery assistance available to San Diego families. Uh, the simple reality is no one in America should ever go hungry. And a lot of folks are working really hard to try and ensure that's reality. The San Diego Hunger Coalition says about 250,000 kids in San Diego qualify. We have all the details on the program at our website right now. Just go to cbs8.com slash help. A big pullback today for investors due to an increase in coronavirus cases, suggesting the economy may not recover as quickly as hoped. The Dow fell more than 1,800 points, or nearly 7% today. This comes after a two-month run of the market streaking higher. The Nasdaq fell more than 5%, and the S&P 500 closed down more than 6%. More than 1.5 million Americans filed for unemployment last week, but that's half a million fewer than the week before. The total number of unemployment claims over the past three months is now up to 44 million. The number of weekly claims filed has been declining, though, since businesses started reopening across the country. No badge needed for this year's Comic-Con as the event gets set to kick off online for free. Details coming up. And why it seems like gun sales are on the rise across the county. A coronavirus patient gets a life-saving double lung transplant. I'm Chris Martinez with a medical milestone.